So thank you for your for being here. Thank you for contributing to the fellowship uh, with your the you brought and um, your love for the brothers and sisters. What we're going to do in this time, let me just summarize real briefly. Um, basically, the goal of the meeting is just to, for me, really for me as the pastor, to summarize for you the work that I did. I, most of the meeting, a lot of the meeting is that. The work that I did in my call as the pastor of this congregation to shepherd the flock, to preach the word, to teach, um, to disciple, summarize my work, let me be accountable to you, let you ask questions, let you drill down where you uh, have thoughts or other interests, and then also not just talk about 2019, but look forward to the year ahead and different opportunities that, that we would like to capture and um, throw ourselves into. Um, I will also go over, um, you'll see in here, this is a lengthy document because, and I don't plan on um, reading it to you, but rather just um, hitting highlights along the way, letting you ask questions. And um, so please stop me along the way if you have a question. Um, if my mom were here, she would tell you, you probably should wait until I'm done speaking before you interrupt, or don't interrupt. So I'll say that on her behalf. I'm just kidding. Yeah, and that's, that's another thing. We, uh, congregational meetings like this, a big group, um, we technically do, when it comes to regular business, operate under um, a kind of order, Robert's Rule, Robert's Rules, and if we need to use that, we will. Basically, if it's a big, huge, thick book called Robert's Rules. It's used by the Congress, US Sen the United States Senate, the United States House, House of Representatives, and it, it could, you might look at it and say, oh, that's just a bunch of rules, you know. Well, these are their manners is what they are, like how to behave yourself in a public setting so that everybody's rights are defended. Everybody, for the sake of love, what, what, what would love look like if in a setting like this where multiple people might like to talk and say something? What would love do? And the, that's really what I, that's the way I like to think of the Roberts Rules. Um, and I know none of, none of you here are probably uh, twisted enough to have bought a copy of that and read it, but um, I've read it for you. And I will, w if we need to use it, we will. But we probably won't. Um, <clears throat> but when it comes to making motions and stuff like that, that's what I'm talking about. Make a motion, let people uh, discuss, ask questions, and um, move things in a, a, an orderly direction. Um, Charlie Lystrip is going to help me out uh, later on in the meeting when it comes to the budget um, as a member of the budget committee. And uh, that's part of the work that we have here to do this afternoon. Uh, but where I'd like to begin is um, if you want to turn to page two so that you got a cover sheet, gives you an outline. Um, and then on page two, I have there a, um, a passage of scripture that I'd like to read. And then I, there's some uh, a quote that I've taken from a book that I was reading, and um, I put that in there for your own edification. You can, I'm not going to read it to you now, but take it home, read it. I, I might highlight something in it in a second here. But So I'm going to read Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Um, I have a couple of comments. I'm going to pray, and then we will, I will begin my report. Anybody object? All right. Jesus, after his resurrection from the dead, speaking to his disciples, said to them in Matthew 28, 18, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all the things that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. The quote I have there for you, what I really liked about, um, this is one of the fathers in the faith who's gone on, gone home to be with the Lord, Ed Clowney. Um, he was a pastor in the OPC um, for many years. Um, what he says here in this quote, if you get a chance to read it, 
is that Jesus is a gatherer. Jesus is really the missionary. Jesus is, is, the, is the chief missionary of the church, sent by the Father into the world to gather. And that when he gathers people to himself, he makes them gatherers. He, he turns uh, wayward sinners, he gathers them to himself, so that we in turn get the great pleasure of gathering other people. In, in, Work, being co-workers, as Paul says, co-laborers with Christ in gathering people out of darkness into light. And he has some great thoughts in here um, about um, how the church, Matthew twelve thirty, where Jesus says, He who is not with me is against me, and he who does not gather with me scatters. And Clowney has a great, I, I really appreciate his thoughts on that here. Where he says, as a church, if we, the, the more that we are focused on receiving Christ's grace ourselves, the more that we are, as a, as a body, are intent on being gathered by Him, we will want to be gatherers ourselves. And, and in gathering, and the church in its gathering work does its best to protect itself from scattering. And there is always a, a tendency of the church to scatter, um, to scatter from one another, first of all, um, and what causes the church to shatter, to break apart, and to scatter, the sheep to scatter from one another, but um, the inability to uh, see um, the same grace of God that I have been, been brought into through Jesus' gathering work, to forget that it is my highest privilege to share, to give that grace to others, to, to forgive as I have been forgiven, to show grace as I have been shown grace, to love as I have been loved. And when we lose sight of that, we quit being gatherers and we're setting ourselves up to become scatterers here in the body and in uh, the world as well. So we, we want to uh, give thanks for the great things, that we evident things that we see the Lord doing and have, ha, that He has done. And um, the, the excitement that I feel in the congregation um, is is about Jesus gathering, and He's gathering to make us gatherers also. In other words, to get to help us by the gospel to be looking outward, outward towards one another. First of all, outwards towards our brothers and sisters, being anxious, being eager to show grace, to 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 grant forgiveness, and to um, show to our brothers and sisters the things that have been shown to us. So. Um, in the year ahead, that's one of my prayers for us, is that we will uh, excel in, in, um, in giving ourselves to other people as Christ has given himself to us, and thereby become gatherers and co-laborers with Christ. Well, as you will see in the... Uh, let me pray. Let me pray. Uh, Father, we, we want to ask you to... Uh, bless this time together. We pray, Father, that um, we would, through these reports, what we would see and hear is the presence of Jesus Christ as um, our great shepherd leading us into victory, leading us into safety and rest. And Lord, where there is always sin and failure with us, there is nothing but success with him. And we thank you for that. And so as we would consider where there is weakness and, and there is need uh, for new things. Let us look to Christ and to see in Him our all in all. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so my main calling here is as... Um, there's many different words in the, in the New Testament in particular for... Men who are called to the ministry, there you can think of elders or bishops or overseers or, or uh, shepherds or um, ambassadors or um, you can, uh, all kinds of terms that are used that I'm not remembering right now. But um, one of the terms that, that Paul uses of himself and of Timothy is minister of the word. And so my first calling here is to... Shepherd the flock of God under my care through the, through the preaching of the word and through the teaching of the word. And so I have a summary for you there on page two of uh, the um, preaching ministry in particular and our worship and the, 
the different places that we have been um, in Scripture, and um, you know, seeking to preach the whole counsel of God. That's certainly uh, my intent and design. We work our way through it slowly, but um, I think uh, God, the Lord gave us great progress in the studies that we made in the past year. Um, I also like to acknowledge the the ministry of others who have who the God has used to fill in in my absence. Uh, whether it's been uh, Dave Van Slyke or Wayne McManigal as elders here, we've also enjoyed. Uh, we we also had the chance to bless a man, a young man, David Wright, pursuing who's pursuing the ministry. He's um, he's under the care of the Presbytery of the Northwest and is pursuing a call to become a pastor. And he came uh, one time and, and um, opened God's word to you. Uh, perhaps you remember that, remember him or Calvin Malcor and Carl Thompson, both um, pastors who come from Southern Oregon, and Calvin's retired, um, but he was delighted to be here, Carl as well. Um, we we're thankful for their fellowship and preaching. Um, I continued teaching the men's study on a bi-weekly basis. Um, uh, we're still studying the book of Ecclesiastes. I was thankful that Wayne McManigal was able to fill in for me um, when I needed him to in, uh, during 2019. Um, the Writing project, that probably doesn't fit into this category, so I'm not sure why I put it here, but um, I did, it's there, top of page three. Um, I didn't make much progress, and um, we'll talk a little bit further in the meeting about um, the session, that the interest of the elders that I make progress on that, so they'd like me to take steps to do that. Um, so it's, it's just a, a project on uh, worship that I hope to write on. We'll see where that goes. Um, but I really want to give thanks to God for the way that uh, we have been blessed in worship to have resources that if you miss a Sunday or you miss a, a men's study or a, a discipleship class that uh, Don Hamilton in particular has been very uh, eager to um, make sure these things are recorded um, and preserved for us. He's established the YouTube website. He, he gets these um, recordings to me so that I can put them online and the, make them available to you. He also had the help of, uh, of uh, Rain on several occasions and Silas, um, and I'm sure there were others that helped him in that. Um, so thank you for that. And our worship just is so, so much a, a part of our worship is our singing and admonishing and teaching one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. And that really is, uh, is helped, uh, wonderfully helped, by the accompaniment that we enjoy. Um, so thank you uh, to Sharon, and um, thank you to Cynthia, who shared the piano playing duties most of the year, and then for those who filled in around them with uh, Randy at times, um, uh, Marin played, um, I, Hannah Turner played for us. Um, Dave Van Slyke, and then Don uh, filling in with some uh, vocal accompaniment. So thank you. We thank God for your gifts and that they, we enjoyed them uh, in the, over the past year. Uh, moving on, ministry of the session and shepherding. So the session, if you're not familiar with that term, is just the way we, what, that's the term we, we don't call it the elder, uh, it's a, call it a board, we call it a session. That's just the church um, for many centuries has referred to it that way, and we continue to do that. A session um, is a reference to a, um, a court. So elders rule in the church. Um, that's one of their callings, and they govern the body. Um, and I'm blessed to work uh, with Dave and Wayne in that. Um, my work in that regard consisted in um, writing things, a position on the session, um, the session's position on certain things, um, consulting with people outside the church about pastoral issues, leading in home visitations. Um, I was also blessed with the opportunity to generate the monthly financial statements, which I'm hoping someone will relieve me of, and uh, preparing the agenda for session meetings. So I serve as the moderator of that body. Um, I make sure we don't goof off too much and that we actually stay serious and focused, which we do. And um, uh, thankful for that 
work and the oversight um, that uh, we have over the congregation. Um, as you can see under C there, visitation and pastoral care, I, I really enjoy meeting with people. I really I see it as a very important part of my work. And when people call me on the phone, sometimes they say, I know you're really busy, Pastor Jeff, but could I talk to you? And, and I want to dispel that thought, like, don't ever think that I am too busy to talk. I'm busy, but what am I busy doing? Talking to people. So in encouraging them, counseling them, I love doing it. And I'm busy doing it, and that's what I like to do. So if you call me and want to talk and want me to visit you, nothing would make me happier, and I will, make, I will find the time to do it. So um, please keep that in mind. Um, I counsel on all kinds of different things. Um, I wouldn't say it's a, a great strength of mine, but I will do my best to, to bring God's word to bear on the, your life situ situations and encourage you in the truth. Um, under evangelism, this is something I'm really striving to make a regular part of my ministry. Um, and um, as I said last year, I don't believe that we can wait for the lost to come to us, that we need to go to them. And so Paul told Timothy, do the work of an evangelist, and I'm seeking to do the work of an evangelist. Um, the, one of the ways that I enjoy doing that um, is uh, going out in the community, going door to door. I've done that. I did that a few times last year. Simon Callahan, very thankful, grateful for him. Um, being interested in, in sharing that with me. And I've shared some of that with you in our worship in times of prayer. Um, I think people uh, are, the people have, our neighbors have responded really well to it. And we've had opportunity to share the gospel with people. And I plan on doing that uh, more and more in the year ahead, Lord willing. Um, and if, if that kind of ministry interests you, if you want to go out to the park and, and engage people in, in conversations about spiritual things in the faith, and you want to get in and do some of that, please talk to me, talk to Simon. Um, there's, there's room uh, for more, and um, we can talk about training, and we can do training and, and prep, prepare and talk about uh, and strategize about ways to do that. Um, that would be quite fun, and um, I trust the Lord would bless that. Um, Page four is where I'm at, and if, again, if you want me to slow down and ask for your questions, I'm happy to do that. Um, diaconal ministry, we have a diaconal ministry report coming up, so I'm not going to say much here, um, but right now let me just say this, that Dave, Wayne, and myself are serving as the deacons of the church, um, <clears throat> as the elders, because we don't have any men currently that are ordained to that uh, position, um, though we would love to have that, and... Um, I need to do uh, a good job, a better job of uh, getting officer training moving along for that very reason. But um, you can see ways in which I'm going to get. I'm going to highlight these things when we get to the deacons ministry report. So I'm going to I'm going to skip over E there. Um, I just note that I'm a part of that work. That's part of my involvement when we get calls from people or people are, are looking for physical help in their physical distress and their needs or whatever it might be. Um, I'm, I really enjoy doing that. Um, I enjoy helping people move. You might not, that's kind of weird. You know, I know Mark's moving and he's probably going to call me the night before and say, hey Jeff, can you come? Call me earlier than that, please. Um, and then, you know, things that come up where you need physical help. You know, there are members of the bodies that said, hey, we could really use a work team to get a, to get some uh, job done, and we we put out a call, and what happened? People showed up, and it was really it was really good time together. Um, so, good stuff there. Um, F Presbytery involvement. So the Presbytery, if you're not quite sure what that is, um, it is the church. Um, are the churches that we're united to, and the in the OPC are. Um, have mutual accountability between the churches. So we are a self-governing, self-supporting, self-propagating church here in Roseburg, Oregon, but we are not autonomous. And um, we are connected to the churches in... The Presbytery is the churches, the pastors and elders of the churches in this region where we can logically, reasonably work together without great expense and... Uh, difficulty 
to see, oversee men being um, trained and prepared for the ministry, do the work of church planning, um, engage in the work of foreign missions from a local level, um, oversee the discipline of, of other pastors and elders. We, we had to, to discipline um, this past year. You may remember um, one pastor the year before, another pastor, both of whom um, committed grave sin and were both removed from the ministry. And we are involved in that work. The Presbytery oversees that work. It is, uh, as Paul said to Timothy, you know, that in the laying on of the hands of the Presbytery, um, Paul says that the gift uh, that the gift of the Spirit came upon Timothy for the work of service that he was called into, and that presbytery is um, an ordaining body. It's an, a body that we're accountable to. I'm accountable to. We submit. Uh, we submit our um, meetings from our session meetings. Our monthly session meetings are submitted to the presbytery for their review. And if we are not shepherding the way that we should, or we're we're doing it poorly or excessively in some way. Um, they will uh, come knocking on the door and want to meet with us. And um, that's what we signed up for. That's what we want. We want that accountability. Um, so I'm involved in the presbytery in several ways. Number one, I continue to serve on the Regional Church, Church Missions Committee. That's the work of establishing and planting uh, churches in the Northwest. Um, this past year, that committee didn't take up very much of my time. Very little. Um, but... The church plant in Coeur d'Alene, I continue to serve as, a, as an overseeing elder on that, uh, on that, for that mission work, and that took up a lot of my time. There were very intense seasons during the year. Uh, maybe I should have shared this more along the way, but there were weeks where I spent 20 hours doing work related to the Coeur d'Alene mission work because there was some crisis up there. And... Um, I traveled there twice last year, and both trips were very intense. Um, but the Lord has prospered that uh, our oversight, and things are stabilized there. It, it's been a lot more quiet. I'm very thankful to report. Um, I'm spending about probably two hours a week on it right now. So that's a happier place for me. Um, I enjoy the work, but um, it, it can get exhausting. Um, I also was asked by the Presbytery in the Northwest to be involved in a judicial case. Um, the Presbytery, um, I summarized this in, a, um, in September at a meeting where I reported on the, this work. So if you want the nuts and bolts, nitty gritty, go to the YouTube channel, Covenant Grace Media. Go to the YouTube channel and you will find a September 2019 summary of the Fall Presbytery meeting. You can hear about that work there. Um, but I was asked to defend the presbytery against a formal complaint that was brought against it. Um, basically, let me say this and so nobody's confused. Um, this is not complaining in the sense of like Israel wandering in the wilderness and they're complaining against the Lord. A complaint is, think of the legal system, like you can bring, a, right, if somebody brings a civil case in civil court against somebody, the, that person's the complainant. That's legal terminology. Ba basically what it means is that um, when, a, when a local church session, the, the elders, or the presbytery itself, which is also an overseeing body, if they are negligent, and if, they didn't, if they failed to do something they should have done, or did something that they're called to do, but they did it in, in an improper way, they can be complained against, meaning that a person could say, you were negligent, you were delinquent in the work that you did, and we're calling you to make amends, fix the problem, right? So the Presbytery of the Northwest was complained against, and three, three separate complaints. I was asked to defend it. That took up quite a bit of work this past year, and I uh, was just found out that I probably will have to travel to the General Assembly in Philadelphia to defend the Presbytery there because the complaint was denied and it has gone to the General Assembly on appeal, which means the General Assembly meets once a year. 155 pastors and elders from all over the United States will go to hear these kinds of things just to make sure that people's, again, it's about shepherding the flock of God well, making sure that, that 
there's oversight and that um, churches and pastors and elders are not abusing their power or neglecting to use their power when they should, their authority when they should. So um, that work um, is very interesting. I can't say that um, it was um, it was challenging. Um, and I'm not looking forward to going to General Assembly. <laughs> um, but that sounds like is what is going to happen. Um, if you have more questions about that, let me know. Um, that's the extent of my presbytery involvement. I'm um, um, G there on page four. I am was elected at this last year's General Assembly of the OPC. I was nominated and elected to serve a three-year term on the Committee on Home Missions and Church Extension. Um, so that's think of uh, church planting on a national scale, and that committee oversees the, that work. Um, not that the not the not that the committee oversees the church plants, but we over we that committee is uh, helping presbyteries be successful in pl planting churches. Because regional churches plant churches, okay? That's the biblical model. Churches plant churches, and healthy churches plant healthy churches, or have a better shot at planting healthier churches. Um, and so the committee um, is, we try to help the presbyteries think in a healthy biblical way about church planting, get the resources that they need to do it well. And so the, the work of that committee required me to travel to Philadelphia uh, twice um, this last year. Why Philadelphia? Because that's where the, um, the headquarters um, for the OPC is located. And um, also had, I, I was put on a subcommittee that uh, we interview church planters, potential church planters. So if there's a church plant somewhere in the United States in the OPC that, and they're asking for money to be supported, uh, and we will support them. Um, the church planner has to be interviewed just to make sure that he's a good fit, make sure that he is um, capable and gifted to, to do that, that work because church planning work is very different. It can be very different than regular uh, pastoring of a church at a local level. Obviously, there are different gifts that need to be in play. And um, so I enjoy that. There, I, had, I think I did six interviews for church planners this last year. It may have been more than that. It was probably more than that. That's low. But most of those are done via video conference call. Um, this next year, I will travel uh, to uh, Philadelphia once and then uh, Chicago once for the committee work. So um, once in September, once in December. Uh, and I you know, thank you for putting up with that. I know that... Um, for me to be involved in the Presbytery and be involved on the Committee on Home Missions and Church Extension um, means w during busy seasons that I'm less engaged here locally. Um, so I hope that you can look at it this way, that it's something we do together. Somebody's got to do it, and we get the pleasure of doing it together. And uh, thank you for, for that. Um, so I, uh, to conclude my report, um, I continue to be uh, zealously engaged in the work that that you as a congregation have called me to do here. Um, I have plenty of blind spots, and I don't see them because they're blind spots. So I thank you for you, those of you who charitably point those out to me along the way and help me with that, um, and then tolerate uh, those deficiencies. And um, But that's one of the things about the body of Christ is Ephesians 4, Christ has given a measure of his gift to each one. A measure. I have a measure. You have a measure. None of us are Christ. But together, we're the body of Christ. Together, the gift of Christ in each one of us fills up what is lacking in all of the others. So in many ways, in countless ways, what I lack, um, you fill up. You give, and I need you to do that. And so don't give up. Don't. Uh, lose heart, and that's the way Christ designed it. He could have given, uh, he could have given, I suppose, he could have given the the full measure of the Spirit to whomever he wanted, but he didn't. He gave a measure, uh, a portion of it to each one, so that we all need each other. So don't don't forget that. Look to one another for um, that encouragement and love and um, what you need to be edified. Um, and I. Pray for God's grace that I can continue to do my part in the year ahead. 
That concludes my report. Would anybody like to ask any questions? Could you list your deficiencies? <laughs> I could. We'll talk privately. <laughs> That's, I like that question. Yep. Yes, Mary. Yeah, it is. How can we do that? Yeah, we've done, um, and we did do, and some of you, many of you probably weren't here the last time we did that. I did a class. I've done two classes on engaging unbelievers in conversation. Um, and one was pretty big picture, bi theo theolo biblical theological thing, uh, class. Um, and that was probably two years ago, two and a half years ago. And then I did a follow-up class on... Uh, um, very nuts and bolts, practical ways to, to use any conversation that you might have with somebody to turn it in the direction of um, um, evangelistic and create an evangelistic opportunity. Um, does that sound interesting to anybody? Yeah? We could redo that class. I would benefit from it a great deal. Um, we, if there's other ideas and other... Um, I, that class is, um, and the, the, the approach to that class, I really, I personally enjoyed it, and um, when Simon and I have gone out, you know, I lean on the things that I learned in that class, and um, Simon just leans on his own natural gifting, and, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that was a good class, so, but we could do, uh, something more. Um, I have in term for um, Christian education, which we'll talk about shortly. I have one class already planned for uh, March. Um, there'll probably be a four-week class, um, and then. But after that, if we want to take up another another crack at some evangelistic um, training, that I would be very excited to do that. So, yeah, thank you, Mary. Is there anybody else? Okay, I'm going to go on to page five, the session report. Just take note of the fact, uh, this is me, us being accountable to you. Uh, we met every month. Um, uh, we met, we actually met probably 14 times last year. I think we had a couple of special meetings. And... Um, during these meetings, um, we talk about, um, of course, all the harebrained ideas that I come up with that Dave and Wayne have to tell me no to. Um, and the, um, you know, if there, if there are any, um, most of the time it's not necessarily spent on talking about people, but the ministry of the church as it connects to all of, all of your lives in, in the church. Um, and um, we usually meet for probably four hours. It's probably, um, I would mention at this time that if you ever want to come to one of those meetings, you're invited. Um, if, we, if we have to, for some reason, talk about a specific individual that's, that's related to specific individuals, we would excuse you um, during that, um, that discussion. Um, but the meetings are, are open to you. We usually meet on the second Wednesday of the month, as a general rule. Sometimes that, a lot of times that flexes. So you, you should check a, ahead if you want to attend. Um, um, Wayne McManigal has been serving um, the Roseburg Rescue Mission, uh, bringing two messages a month, two gospel messages a month. Uh, I think he's been, is it 10 years, Wayne? No. Over 10 years? 06. Oh, 06, so... Oh my, sorry, I short, I chopped off a four years, um, almost fourteen, almost fourteen years, and he continues to do that. When he started doing that, they didn't have enough people to f 
uh, they, they were short on people who are willing to serve the mission in that way. Um, if you don't know this, to stay the night at the rescue mission, you have to come to chapel. You have to come and hear uh, God's Word taught. So Wayne has two, two times a month been doing that for almost 14 years. Uh, they recently told him that they have enough volunteers now. They only need him once a month. So um, uh, second Sunday of the month. So very encouraged by his persistence in that. Um, it's a great example to all of us, I think. Um, um, Wayne also serves on the Presbytery of the Northwest Visitation Committee. So he made some trips in 2019 um, to churches. To And when they meet with the church, they, they usually attend a worship service. They stay after, have fellowship with the congregation. They ask the congregation and members of the congregation how things are going. Do they have concerns? They meet with the, the pastor and the elders, and they ask really tough questions. Really tough questions. They really get down to what are you doing? Are you asleep at the wheel? You know, trying to figure out how the church is doing. And so it's a very important work. And the Presbytery has the visitation committee um, on a regular rotation visiting all of the churches. And so Wayne has to travel around doing that. He gets to do it. Um, he gets to write reports. And um, it's very important work. And uh, glad that he continues to serve on that committee. Uh, Dave, um, Elder Van Slyke, is on the uh, Presbytery of the Northwest Judicial Committee. Good for him. Last year, we, a um, very important committee, of course. Um, last year, I put in this report that our prayer for him was that he would be unemployed during 2019. That didn't turn out to, to be the case, Dave. And um, he kept busy several points during the year with uh, a couple of judicial matters. I mentioned we had... <coughs> A pastor. He was actually one of our missionaries in Africa, um, who we had to um, file charges against, charges of sin, very serious sin, for which he was ultimately um, deposed from office. And um, he ultimately was excommunicated from the church, the visible church of Jesus Christ. Very sad. Um, and Dave was part of the committee that make sure make sure that that process gets done biblically that things are kept um, biblical and that love is, is instituted um, in that process. So um, both of those brothers are busy, um, both locally and then regionally. Dave also was asked to defend the Presbytery against one of the complaints, the one of the three complaints that I also worked on. So um, he also may get to go to General Assembly in um, in Philadelphia later this year. So uh, you can see the membership changes there. There has been a wonderful influx of um, new people. Um, praise the Lord. And um, these are the, the total membership. You see, fifty-six communicant, thirteen non-communicant members. Those are um, people we you know we keep a we keep a, a name. Uh, Paul or the author of Hebrews talks about. Um, the souls about which pastors and elders, elders will have to give an account, right? Well, I want to know the names who are on that list, so we keep a list, right? Because I don't want to be accountable, I don't want to be held accountable for any. <laughs> well, I, I'd be held accountable for as many as Christ is, is, uh, is pleased to bring into this uh, church, but I don't assume just because somebody comes into the church that, they are um, under our care. Uh, the oversight, right? Uh, one of the names in Scripture for an elder is bishop, which means overseer, an overseer. I don't assume to have oversight over anybody and everybody that comes in the door. We have a membership list, those who have said, will you please oversee my life as an elder? We do that. And I think that's, you know, we, we see that as being biblical, right? You, I, I'm not going to um, just put your name on the list and then start holding you accountable, right? Um, I'm, but I'm, I will ask you, would you like to be, uh, would you like to have your membership in the body of Christ, would you like to work that out here and be under the oversight of, of local elders, which um, we're commanded in Scripture to do? So there's the, the number, praise the Lord. We're very thankful for each one of you. And we're very thankful for um, all of the uh, regular attenders and visitors that we've had in 2019. It's been such a blessing, and everyone that comes 
Um, you know, we just have prayed that they would stay. And um, so thankful that they've been a part of um, our worship and fellowship. Um, in the year ahead, we really would like to do be more regular with um, visiting our families. It's very important for a pastor to um, hear from the members of the congregation to know how you're doing spiritually. Um, if you have areas of struggle that you would like counsel with, um, if you if you need something from the ministry of the church that you feel that the church is lacking in, there there are so many good reasons for a pastor and the elders to meet with people. Um, and so we, we would endeavor to do that. Um, something that is so e it's very difficult to make happen because everybody's lives are so busy. So we can try, and this is kind of what happened. This is the story of 2019 for me, is attempting to do that and then um, trying to schedule with people, trying to schedule with people, and then realize, like, you know, there's a lot of hurdles and roadblocks. And then just forgetting about it because, or um, maybe even being discouraged that it, it doesn't happen as efficiently and quickly as I might like it to. But um, we won't give up. We won't lose heart. And we would love to schedule a visit with you um, upon your request at any time. So uh, please keep that in mind as well. Um, all right, page six. Deacon's report, what a very encouraging aspect um, to the church, church's ministry to see the way that, that you all give to um, the deacon's fund, which we use to bless people who are in need of food or repairs or house, you know, whether it's car or, or home repairs or um, medical expenses. Uh, we gave twice to Hope Clinic for Women. Um, during uh, 2019 as a congregation. Um, we saw people inside the congregation uh, willingly volunteer to make meals for one another and to organize those kinds of things, to um, work with uh, the ministry that we did for Angel Tree. Uh, Bar Barbie Van Slyke did a, a lot of work um, with such enthusiasm, which I really uh, was especially thankful for, for how excited she was to... Um, lead in that. Um, we had the opportunity to give and bless 14 children in the area with uh, Bibles and gifts and to share the gospel with them. Um, so, yeah, thank you, Barbie, for that excellent work. Thank you to you all. Um, I think everybody, in a way, participated in that and uh, very encouraging. You can see the contribution uh, from the congregation for the year, um, almost $4,000, um, and then the help that it was extended, about Thirty, oh, just over thirty-six hundred dollars. There's the Indian balance of the Deacon Fund. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that that we can do in the future, I think, is we're you know look out for as we're going out uh, doing evangelistic work. Uh, I'm one of the things I'm listening for is an opportunity to maybe help one of our neighbors who um, we could do pr provide something for them physically in their physical distress and their physical need that might. Um, that we might be able to do in Jesus' name that, that just shows them that they're, uh, we're not just, we, we would love nothing more for them to hear the gospel and believe, but even still Christ touched and blessed many people who never followed him or who followed him for a time and then went their way, you know. Um, so we can do good to people in that way. And, and so thank you for giving to that work um, and uh, look forward to um, continue to give to uh, Hope Clinic for Women. I think we'll, we'll do a special offering, I predict, in 2020 for them. Um, we did a special offering for Sarah Heaton. That was this year, actually. That was January. Um, just so you know, we the, the congregation raised, uh, gave, um, I think, right, just under uh, $1,450 uh, to Sarah Heaton. And um, I trust that is a great encouragement. She she has that by now. I'm sure we'll hear, hear from her. Um, I think we sent that off on Monday. So she probably got it this past week. And um, look forward to hearing how we were able to encourage her in that. And we'll look for opportunities to do more of that um, in 2020. That's fun, very fun work, isn't it? Um, 
Okay, Christian education. So um, you saw there the I, we did two classes in 2019. There was the church membership class, and then also the the class I did in the fall on different topics. All of those are online, except the seventh class, which is on the Trinity and the Christian life. Um, we're trying to find it. it. We have it recorded. It's somewhere. We just can't find the file, so I can upload it onto the church website for you to link to. Um, but the other classes are on there, and I have them listed for you there if you've forgotten already. Um, I try and think of fun, memorable names. Sometimes they're too long, though, aren't they? They're kind of long. But, um, yeah, and the, the children's class came off really well, very encouraging. Uh, reports that I heard from the young people and how they enjoyed that, what a blessing it was to see... Um, members of the congregation put in the work to do that. Colleen, uh, Lenny, um, Wayne and Willa, Don, Dave and Barbie uh, volunteering for that. Um, so that, that, that was neat. I trust there'll be opportunities for that again this year. And um, in case you're wondering, I know it came up in a private conversation I had with, with one of you in the, in the congregation. If I send out, an, if I put before you a min, an opportunity to volunteer to do something, uh, don't ever think that if you don't volunteer that I'm, that that is an issue. Uh, I, I trust that the Lord will, one, He'll supply and meet the need, and He will direct your lives in such a way that you will do what's best for you, you'll do what's best for your family in that regard, and that the Lord, um, if, if He would stir you up to do it at the right time, that He will. And so, I, that, those kinds of things don't. I, I don't even. I don't even think that way. If I could, if I can put it that way, I don't think in in those terms. Um, yes. Do you have to be a member to, to Oh, that's a good question. Um, yeah, I. The way I. Th well, here's the way that I view that question. I think that um, people that are interested in pursuing membership. Um, we have in the past um, welcomed them into volunteer opportunities. However, we have to think of, if we, if we have a ministry, or if the church has a ministry, the elders have oversight of it. And if, so if we have oversight of a ministry, but there's somebody involved in that ministry over whom we don't have oversight, we've given up some of the oversight. You, does that make sense? So it's kind of, like we, we kind of ha have, to, if we have oversight of a ministry, we also should have oversight of the people that are not in partaking of the ministry, but people who are leading in it or, or giving themselves to it. And that's, that's the, the reason, because it's just a, a question of oversight. Are we mutually submitted to one another? Um, and um, so, yeah, that's a very good question, though. Um, and that, just so you know, that's, that's, that's our thinking as, as the elders of that. Um, we don't want to prevent anybody from serving. We want everybody, all, you know, kind of like Moses said, um, we, we would that all God's people were prophets, right? Um, we wish that everybody in the church would, would volunteer, but we, we have to, we have, one of our tasks is to shepherd, is to guard the flock, and we do that by our oversight, and, but we can't have oversight over somebody that more we don't have oversight over. And so that's, yeah, if that makes sense. So, excellent question. Um, uh, more classes, uh, top of page seven. More classes are planned for 2020. Um, the first class that I have planned, and the this class is, I'm going to come up with a better title, Why We Can Trust the Bible. I like that. The Canon and Authority of Scripture. I'll explain what we mean by that. Um, basically, you know, the canon, the, we talk about the canon of Scripture being um, what, what books what writings has God given to us as the standard by which we measure the truth? That word canon comes from the uh, Hebrew word that means rod or measuring stick. So what is the measuring stick for truth? Well, it's, it's the writings that God has given us. Well, it begs the question, what are those writings? How do we know these are those writings? And I've heard from a number of people in the congregation, most of them young people actually, who are... You know, they, it's great. They get to a, you get to a point where you're like, well, how does that work? How did how did the New Testament come together? And and you can hear people talk about how 
well, there were other books that the church should have included that they didn't, and and you know it was a power play, and there's all kinds of things that outsiders will use to try and discredit the Word of God so that you lose confidence in it. And so we want our young people in particular to have great, I want all of you to have great confidence in God's Word, but particularly young people as they're starting to wrestle with this. So I want to do a class, I think, I'm not, I'm not going to promise it'll only be four weeks, but I think I can do it in four weeks. So that we'll see about that. It's a big subject, but if I can, if I can uh, structure it the way that I have it envisioned right now, I think four weeks would work. Um, I also taught five different times an evening class for young people on evaluate, evaluating worldviews, which I thought was very well attended and um, was a wonderful time. I enjoyed it very much. Um, and we have the new youth gatherings that are starting in February once a month. Um, and I'm sure we'll come back to this, uh, a worldview class. We'll, pro we'll probably incorporate that along the way, just um, taking a night to watch something, listen to music or something, and then evaluate the worldview that's communicated through it. So uh, I enjoy doing that a lot. Okay, I'm going to move on to women's uh, ministry, unless anybody has any questions. Um, we've seen uh, women that take opportunity, that have opportunity to take advantage of the opportunities that are there. They do. And um, again, that's kind of the way we look at it. If you, if you don't make, if you are a lady and you don't make it to that or you don't, it's not a priority to you, then God bless you. I mean, I'm, I'm, nobody's, nobody's taking attendance or keeping track. And that's true for the men's ministry too. It's there for you. Uh, to avail yourself of the, the benefits of it um, as you can in your life. And we don't, I don't pretend to um, be the one that gets to decide whether or not you have enough time to do that. I trust the Lord will, will do that for you. And if you uh, think it's useful to you, you'll take advantage of it. Many women did this past year, whether it was with the... Um, the study on Fridays uh, that Willa has been uh, helping to um, make sure gets off smoothly. Um, they did, they're still doing the uh, Book of Hebrews a video series by Dr. Michael Kruger, so you can still participate in that if you want to. Thank you to Mary Ward for hosting. Very, uh, that's very kind of you to open up your home like that, so we're very thankful. And Willa, thank you for, for leading that like you do. And uh, I hear good things about those who get an opportunity to participate. And then um, uh, Don usually is the uh, the one who makes sure makes sure that the ladies' fellowship comes together, and those opportunities are regular. Um, and uh, Mike and Missy Craker have uh, we're looking for a place to host, and they they were um, willing to offer their place and have done so. So. We thank them. I know they're not here this afternoon, but um, men's ministry, um, that just, we continue to study, um, you know, in a manly way. You know, we try and be manly as we do it. Um, the a book, the study of Ecclesiastes. Um, yeah, we in particular, you know, I always try and, and think about, approach that study in a way that we can edify the young, the younger men in the congregation, the Whoever, whatever young men might show up, um, so that I'll often gear the study in a way that helps, intentionally helps them th learn how to study scripture for themselves. So um, I try and make a point of doing that, and I'm blessed to see them uh, participating in that, and I think their, their fathers are too. Um, one idea that I've been interested in doing, I'll just throw it out there now, I'm in, uh, I have an interest in, um, I'm looking for somebody that wants to do this with me. If there's many of you that want to do this, fantastic. But I've been wanting to commit myself to reading something um, on a regular basis, reading and praying through um, uh, something that challenges me to grow um, in as a, a father, as a husband, um, and as someone who's called to make disciples. So. Um, if you're interested in doing like an early mor men 
if you're interested in doing like an early morning during the weekday, a weekday early morning, um, just getting together for 30, 45 minutes, um, reading from a book, reading it together, discussing it briefly, praying and encouraging one another. If that is interesting, it sounds interesting to you, uh, please let me know. Um, I'd like to do that. Um, outreach. Um, this is a big multi-paragraph thing because there's opportunities I've included in here for you. So please take the chance to read that. Make an, make an opportunity to read that page into page 7. Um, <clears throat> in 2019, um, I was encouraged. I, one of the things that I think as a pastor I get to hear about, maybe you share it with one another, but I think um, it seems people are often telling me, people in the congregation are telling me about the outreach that they have done to their neighbors, telling me stories about how they, they had a chance to help a neighbor who was uh, sick and, and needed a ride to the hospital, and it took, brought an opportunity to share the gospel, and they took it. Um, I love hearing those stories, and I, I want to highlight that because uh, the work of evangelism isn't just for the pastor or the elders. It's for each one of us. Each one of us has um, the, the privilege of speaking God's Word. So um, I do put a little encouragement for you in there on the first paragraph. I encourage you to read that. Um, on page 8, um, the Angel Tree Program, though it's part of our Mercy Ministry. It's also um, very much an outreach. Um, part of Christ's outreach was was doing good to people in their distress, and and so um, that opportunity was fantastic for that. And we actually had several caregivers, one in particular who was very adamant in telling us that they were going to come and be a, be a, coming to worship with us. Um, and we haven't seen them, but we keep praying for them. Um, I think they intended to do that, um, and life, um, you know, has a way of squashing our good intentions. And um, so that, that very much was an excellent outreach to those uh, families that we uh, had contact with, the door-to-door. -door. I put that in there as part of our outreach. Um, in the past, I've done a parenting and marriage class um, at Outreach to the Community. I'm Considering that as a, as a possibility, talk with Dave and Wayne, see what they think about that. But we, we did it a, for a couple of years, and I really like the response to it. Um, I know it meets a need in the community, a parenting class, a marriage class. Um, people responded to it very, um, over, very overwhelming response on Facebook. We didn't have great turnout for the parenting class in particular. But part of that was I think it, we held it here at the church. And because we held it here at the church, we had to spread it out over several weeks. Um, the library is back open, and it's a fantastic venue. Uh, I think it's the cost is pennies. I mean, it may be $50 that they're charging now to host it there. We could host it on a Saturday morning um, and um, do the whole class in one sitting. We did that for a couple of marriage classes that were very well attended. And um, so if we do that, I would be... Um, looking to you guys to consider uh, participating in that to be a help um, in in um, uh, making that go off, get it, get off the ground, and um, so. Well, I haven't talked to Dave and Wayne about that yet. See see what they think. Like I said, our meetings are a lot of. Uh, it was just me coming up with ideas that they tell me I need to rethink, but I think they like that one in the past. We'll see. Um, the session. Uh, would like to encourage members of the congregation to participate in the OPC short-term mission opportunities in 2020, and we would like to do that by providing a financial scholarship. So we have designated um, at least $2,500 uh, to help members of the congregation uh, go on a mission trip, and I've listed there for you the kinds of opportunities that exist. Um, and I also put a, a little note in there, I think it's worth saying, you know, these Trips are not tourist opportunities. They're, they don't, the mission, we don't ask the missionaries to make up a bunch of work so that we can give people in the congregation a chance to go see the world. Uh, the, these, these opportunities are actually our missionaries saying, we have work to do and it would be a blessing to us if we had um, for a short period of time uh, people who um, have gifts and a competency and a willingness to help make it work. And so there's a bunch of opportunities to do that. 
um, in Uganda. That Uganda is always looking for the work there. Is there's a lot of good work there. Uruguay, our missionaries down there. Um, Asia, that's China. China, there there's a need um, for um, not short term. Um, well, short term. The short term opportunity there is a minimum of a year. Um, so if that something interests you. Um, in ch actually, Uganda, Uruguay, Asia, uh, China, and well, those three, those are, that's three, yeah. Those three in particular are looking for missionary associates, and that's a minimum of one year of service. So if you're considering, if you'd like to consider something um, along those lines, um, there are opportunities to do so. Um, if you like, uh, would like to, more experience in uh, in evangelism, the Boardwalk Chapel in Wildwood, New Jersey. Um, it's right on one of the piers in Wildwood. It's a, ha a super uh, busy tourist attraction, and the Boardwalk Chapel has been there for about 70 years, and they, they have an open storefront, and they preach the gospel and sing, uh, sing and, work and song to the Lord, um, and which attracts people walking by in. And then after the worship service, they go out and um, talk to people on the boardwalk. Um, and a lot of that is staffed by young people. Um, they have pastors and, and other volunteers that oversee the work. But um, young people in particular um, have been encouraged uh, to go to that. And um, there's also Key's Evangelistic Ministry in Key West, Florida, Bill Welzine, um, who preaches the gospel at least once a week out in the, out at the, uh, I forget what it's called, but there's a public down at the beach where everybody would go to surf and, or fish or whatever they do. And he, he's out there at least once a week um, sharing the gospel with people, and he enlists the help of willing volunteers. So um, keep that in mind. Um, and then Bill, Ben Westerveld, our missionary in Quebec City. This is almost like foreign missions. I know Canada's part of North America, but Quebec is French-speaking. It's a French-speaking culture um, that is ex very secular, um, Roman Catholic. So a, ver a highly secularized Roman Catholic um, culture with a bunch of different ethnicities thrown in. And ben, Ben's work up there is fantastic, what he does in reaching the community. Um, one of the things that the French-speaking people up there want um, is they want their children to know how to speak English, and he does these English camps during the summer. Um, I, I just heard that he he's already they're already booked. He books he books them out. Um, he's he had the first two booked for this coming summer. He had them booked at the end of last summer, I think. The third one just booked up, so he, now he's he's planning a fourth uh, camp. Which these are, these are all kids and their parents coming from the neighborhoods around the church, and they're all a lot of them are Muslim, or they're secular Roman Catholic, and this has been used mightily by the Lord to bring people to Christ. Um, it's a really neat ministry. It's cross cultural. Um, if you're um, know any French, um, I they, it's not a requirement because you're teaching English, so. But talk to me if this interests you, um, and I'd love to discuss um, and point, point, help you figure out um, how to take um, advantage of those opportunities. Okay, we're, we're getting there. Uh, fellowship, anybody have any questions about any of that? Okay. Uh, fellowship, um, so of course this is very organic, hopefully. You know, we, we don't necessarily plan a lot of events to um, for fellowship, but it's one of the things that we do. We have the monthly fellowship meal. Um, we have the barbecue that we've done um, and continue to do at Wayne and Willa's house. And we thank Wayne and Willa for, they love to do it. They always do a lot of work getting everything ready. And then um, the place is always comfortable and um, beautiful for us to enjoy. And so we plan on doing that again this year if they'll have us. And, um, but let me just say in closing on the fellowship, if, if you have ideas for fellowship, please 
um, let me know, talk to Willa, talk to Barbie, um, and um, there's all kinds of ways to create opportunities to get to know one another better and discover um, how we can build each other up um, in our faith. And um, if, you have sp if you're a spontaneous person and you like to just come up with, you know, last second you have a get-together you'd like to help pulling together, let me know and I can, you know, I can easily communicate with everybody um, in short order. So um, if you think of something, please let me know and I can help, help you pull it together. All right, page nine. The last thing I'd like to put before you again is our service opportunities. Um, and these are things that the session would like to give members of the congregation a, a place specifically to use their gifts, gifts in places of service. So, um, I, again, you know, I've talked about this before. I don't have a, a list necessarily of specific things, but if you would like to be a part of helping the fel our times of fellowship, um, come off smoothly. Um, I would. What I would do, is, and if you came to me and said, I, "Pastor Jeff, I'd like to get involved with that," I would. Charles and Abby, it's good to see you. Glad you could be here. Yeah, All right. <laughs> Bye, Cameron. <laughs> he looked. Uh, um, the um, if you said I would like to help with fellowship um, aspects of the church's um, ministry and fellowship. Um, I would probably put you in contact with Willa, for example, and and there are all kinds of things that get done on a regular basis that help facilitate that, that you could help shoulder the load in that. Um, the same with hospitality. Um, there's work that could be done um, maybe in that area, um, some of it weekly, uh, but some others of it occasional. Um, and if you'd like to, if you, if you enjoy hospitality and would like to um, take on some tasks, let me know, um, and I can tell you ways to get involved. Um, Christian education. Um, and Desiree Pangburn volunteered to be involved in, yeah, she's rolling, she's trying to think, in the, li in the library, church library, putting that together. I've been looking for somebody that will help uh, collate and, and list for everybody the resources that we are in possession of and that are available to you to use. Um, and so that's one thing. If, she's if, she, if she actually has the time to do that and is, is willing, that that's something that I hope to see accomplished during this year. Um, that would be a wonderful um, work to see accomplished. And, um, but there's other aspects of uh, Christian education. If you, if you like to teach and you, um, you think it's a gift of yours and we, have, uh, we can... Um, test those gifts and, and, and see about putting them to use um, in the congregation. Why wouldn't we want to do that? Um, uh, of course, missions. Um, I just mentioned um, certain ways in which um, the work of missions could be um, engaged in, uh, short-term missions. But there's also um, keeping the congregation informed about, and really, it, I would love it if we had some folks that wanted to um, stay on top of what's going on in mission works, church planning in North America, um, foreign missions overseas, stay connected even to our missionaries. There's so much information that comes in, I can't necessarily process all of it and then get it out to the congregation because there's so much information. There's so We have, you know, actually I should know how many foreign missionaries we have. I don't know, 30, something like that, 30 or probably more than 30. And so reports from that, the, the, them and staying on top of prayer requests for them. And then you know, I get reports on a, a biweekly basis from church planners across the country and things that they're asking for prayer for and need and have requests about. And if there are people that liked to would like to be involved in that, that I could... Um, I could give you some things to do that would really help the congregation uh, be informed about those kinds of things. And um, we do have, usually once a year, there's an opportunity for us to host a foreign missionary. Um, one, one of the, the missionaries is on furlough. Their family's on furlough. Um, this past year, Mike McCabe from China 
was on furlough, and we had to say no. I had to say no. Session had to say no to that, him hosting him because um, he got booked up, and the only day of the week that he could come, I knew wouldn't work for us. So we had to pass on that, unfortunately. But uh, when when that happens, there's often a, a poss- a opportunity to host um, to help refresh the the guest and um, you know maybe take him on a hike to a waterfall. I don't know something to um, as part of their visit here, and there's there's work that could be done there, and then finance. Um, so finance, we we have a, a I guess you could say it's a committee, but um, ordinarily the finance team is made up of the budget committee, which um, serving currently on the budget committee, uh, Charlie Lystrip, Dave Vance, like Jamie Yoon, and uh, Randy Moore. Is Randy here? Him and Helen had to go. Okay. Um, and then um, we would have, or we have uh, a treasurer, and ideally an assistant treasurer which we don't have currently. So um, uh, that committee is responsible for, the budget committee for helping um, con- put the budget together, uh, but the finance committee, treasurer, assistant treasurer for um, handling the week- weekly offerings, routine banking needs, keeping the check register up to date, creating monthly and annual financial reports. So it's very important work. Um, and s- I know that um, Wayne has been serving as the treasurer, and every year begs, begs for somebody he thinks that would be more qualified than himself to do it. He's very humble, and he. So, um, uh, yeah, we we. Uh, I don't know. I I, I think that um, Mary Ward has um, shown interest in in sharing in those duties, and it has been helping Wayne. And so we want to thank Mary for that. And um, I. Would um, I would actually like to nominate her to be the assistant treasurer if she would accept that nomination? Okay. Okay, we got a second. Woo! All right. So, um, are there any other nominations? Would anybody else like to put the, themselves forward? That's if you're a member of the congregation, you're. Um, and want to be considered for serving as, I, I bet you could probably dislodge, uh, you could um, replace Wayne as treasurer. He would, that, he would probably allow that to happen. If <laughs> um, yeah, so if there are any other nominations or um, someone would like to volunteer um, in that capacity, feel free. If not, I will... Declare Mary Ward elected, and thank you for for that. We'll um, we'll put you to work right away. <laughs> Very good. Well, that concludes my um, my report. The last order of business is the budget for 2020, uh, approving uh, the budget for 2020 that was put together by the budget committee. You'll find it as. The 11th page, yeah, 10th page has our closing song, and then after that is the, uh, the budget. Um, ask Charlie Lystrip as a member of the budget committee to, to present on that and then to uh, move the budget and answer questions. Um, I'll just turn it over to him. So, oh, some on. good news. If we, uh, if we look at what we spent, in 2019, and there's actually a typo on here that's a bank letter in your favor. Thank you. That all <laughs> no. the totals are fine, everything else is fine. They're just the in the second column, the actual expense says 113,000. Uh, that's actually 110,000. 110? Yeah. So okay. We're basically we spent about 500 more than we had planned, which is pretty good when you're trying for a year kind of thing. So, so. And the real blessing is that the Lord's provided more than the expenses in 2019 to cover those. We had a little bit of a, a surplus in terms of tithes and offerings of about 8000 So our kind of philosophy on the budget committee has been, let's not 
plan next year in any way beyond what the Lord's provided in the past. We, we you know, we, we're trusting the Lord for provision in this category. We've also made it, uh, we have obligations to the pastor and his family and to all, all sorts of other things in here that we don't like to get out and be more aggressive. So we, we like to plan this where we can, uh, the following year would be in line with maybe what our historic the track record has been and, and such. So what I wanted to share is, is just in the 20, uh, on the 2020 budget line, there are a few items that I just want to point out that might uh, help. If you have any questions, feel free. The, the first one, rather than go line by line, I'm just going to give you the broad brush and if we can look at anything. So there's a category of the salary and the pension, things that are uh, uh, pastoral care categories. And what we've used as a guideline is about two years ago, the Presbytery came up with a pastoral care committee. And they've done a great job of nationwide defining how we can make sure that we're blessing those who are serving us. And so in this case, they have guidelines. We aren't bright guys. We just copy the guidelines, you know, like literally <laughs> to the T. If it says it's supposed to be X, and we can probably round up a little bit. I think this is your, you're hitting your sixth year of service mid-year or April or whatever. So we, we, we round it up. It says if, if they've done their sixth year, we assume that means if they've even been started or they're going to hit it in that year. So, but, uh, so that, that takes care of a, a portion of sa uh, pastoral care, whether it's uh, salary, pension, health care, housing allowance, car, car uh, stipend, things like that. Uh, there's another category that's new that we, we have the category already of pulpit supply, but you know every week the pastor is prepping for uh, laboring to, to preach the word, and that takes a lot of time to do that prep. And so he's got a project that he wants to work on of writing and stuff. What a blessing to have for two weeks in, uh, at, at his discretion, he'll be sitting in with his family while someone else is preaching the word to him. And that time that week that he would have devoted to prepping for a sermon, he can work on a special project that he's got, or a writing project. So um, the category of saving Wayne and or Mary and or whomever else, uh, we're doing a lot of stuff with tools that are the Abacus, I think it is, and the, what was the other thing? The, the chisel and the stone, something like that. I, I know there was a trailer behind your car and you brought the books in, you know. So, so there, there are software packages out there that let everybody, no matter what part they're doing, cloud-based, you know, it's church stuff, you know. And so there's efficient software package. I think you got a deal for 250 bucks for the year, some, somewhere 260 bucks for the year, something like that. Well worth it because when we look at how much time we're going to save, uh, you know, Will at Wayne's going to come to bed much sooner now, you know, things like that, you know, just, we've got, okay, and then, um, okay, my family's been here for about five years, when we first got here, the church was being subsidized for several years, and several years after we got here, by the Presbytery, we, we were being blessed by them, we weren't meeting our annual obligations, we were being, you know, blessed, and then in other categories, as part of the OPC or as, as a member of the, the Presbytery, they like us to contribute to other churches. And, and uh, so we've now, that's the Lord's provided in this congregation for a couple of years now, where not only are we don't get, take any subsidy from them, but we're also meeting all of our full obligations so that they can uh, take care of their expenses and, and uh, other things. So they kind of have a fixed dollar amount that they ask per communicant members and such. And we're able, we've been now, I guess, the second year in a row that we've been doing that. And then there's Worldwide Outreach, the missions fund that they administer. And that's also in reference to some of the missionaries that uh, Pastor was, was referencing. So we've also, I think for the second, maybe, I think second, maybe third year, we've been able to meet all of our obligations in that category. And then the last item I was going to mention is we've created a new category for it's probably overall would be missions, but it's really c local community outreach. And that might be uh, uh, a ministry in the local area. We, we're going to give the, the elders and the pastor the discretion to decide how and when to use that. But we put in about $4,000 for community outreach 
at the discretion of the session to administer. So uh, the overall budget for next, so, so if we do the bottom line, we had, we had about 110,000 of spending. We had about 100 and, we're, we're gonna round up the 110 to about 111,000 spending. And we had about 119,000 of tithes and offerings. And now we're going into 2020, we're planning to spend 100 and 19, if we round that up a little bit. So numbers here are 118, 797. So, so my point is, we're, we're, our goal was to be conservative and fall within kind of a historical path. Uh, does anybody have any questions before we make a motion about the budget? Is it, are we open for discussion or questions or any particular items? Could I say, um, in terms of presbytery support, which may be um, an area where that's a new idea. We, we s support the presbytery, meaning basically that, that money goes to the, the treasurer of the presbytery and the funds get spent on several things. Uh, first of all, um, the travel for us to hold meetings where we actually meet and, for example, we meet twice a year, spring and fall. Um, all of the pastors and one elder from every church will attend that meeting the location that rotates around the Northwest, the the travel for each one of those that meeting by the material rather than the past the work transportation is part of that um, that meeting is part of it, but then also uh, church planning we we as a presbytery, I said we plant churches, we give money to support our church plants. Um, we also give money to foreign missions. Um, as a presbytery, we um, we also Don Signally. Um, we also um, have a visitation committee that Wayne has to, gets to travel around to the churches to check on their health. We have a, a judicial committee that they have to meet. They have to travel. They have to go and um, be engaged in the work of of the judicial committee or the visitation committee that the our support to presbytery makes sure makes sure those things happen um, worldwide outreach um, in the OPC if we call a, a man and his family to go to the mission field we call them and we suspend, sus, we send them without having to raise funds they do not they don't have to spend their furlough coming to the United States and wearing themselves out traveling the country to raise a bunch of money. Uh, we, we send them. And so a, the large ch a large chunk of worldwide outreach are giving to them is to fund foreign missions. Um, it also goes to the church plants that we do around the country. Um, they are funded on a de declining scale. Probably, I would guesstimate, their original budget for a church plant in the OPC, I'd say it maybe as high as 70% of their initial budget is funded um, by the gifts that we send from the local churches. So, for the, so the pastor doesn't have to be a fundraiser. He can be an evangelist. He can go and win souls and gather people and establish a church rather than worrying about money. Um, then the um, Christian education is another component. Worldwide outreach, um, paid internships, I served three internships before I was ordained as a pastor, and all three of those internships were paid. I was supported um, by the Christian Education Committee so that I could spend a summer with my family at a church away from my home and live and, and, and serve in a local church to get valuable training um, on the way to the ministry. So um, those are the things that that money is going towards. Um, so I think that's helpful if you knew that, even just to be reminded of it. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Questions or discussion? So then I'm going to um, I'll make a motion that we approve the 2020 budget as as it's been distributed. I need a second. All those in favor, say aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. In fact. Okay. Thank you, Charlie, for doing that. Um, okay, well, that is all we have for the, the congregational meeting. Everybody's, of course, welcome to stay and, and 
and visit with one another. But let me give you one more, one last chance to ask any questions if you'd like, if you'd like before. You guys are so meek and mild. <laughs> okay. Well, we're, we're going to close our time together. Um, on page 10, you'll see uh, a song for us to sing together. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, let's do that too. I, there were multiple people, but... Yeah. Yeah. And you don't you don't have to include the name if you don't if you didn't get it so okay so yeah Wayne is going to he took m minutes of the meeting which basically this since this is you know actions are taken at this meeting that affect the course of the life of the church not not a lot but a budget at least um, over the course of the year we keep record of it so that um, anybody wanting to know or to to in the future if they have a question about what took place at that meeting there's a record of it and so he's going to read it to you because we want it, you to agree that it ac accurately reflects what took place just now okay so we need you to to engage just for a minute just so he can what he records we we'd say thumbs up or thumbs down we need him to change something over that information during this meeting. Mary Ward was nominated by assistant president for assistant treasurer by Pastor Scott, I believe, seconded by Don? Yes, Don Scott. Uh, treasury and budget, Charlie Lasher, explained the proposed budget, drawn up by the budget committee. Uh, you've got the handout. Charlie also made a motion to accept the proposed budget. I think Nathan seconded that. Um, so that's the reading. Uh, I need a motion to approve the reading of the budget, right? Um, we did approve the budget. Did you well, did you get that? Yeah. Oh, the reading the approve the reading of the minutes. Okay. Reading of the minutes. We need a motion to approve. Did, was there something put in about Mary accepting? Yes, I do. Yeah. I have that in there. Okay. Um, yes, it was approved. Mary Ward was nominated by Assistant Tre Treasurer by Scott. I read that. She was last nominated. Was she elected? Oh yeah. Okay. She was declared elected. She was declared, right? Yep. By yep. Yeah. So that that would say by. Um, well, it, well, it would say um, without not hearing any other nominations, Mary Mary Ward was declared elected. Is that okay with everybody? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So. Do you guys like the minutes as they were read? Mm -hmm. Does it make you feel good? <laughs> you feel nobody feels angry. Okay, that's good. I think we have general consent to approve the minutes as read. A motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. Is there a second? Would anybody else like to adjourn the meeting? I second. Phil. <laughs> okay, all those in favor, say aye. aye. Those opposed? There are none. Okay, good. Thank you, Wayne. Okay. Thanks for doing that. I know it's tedious work. So uh, I don't know about that. let's, uh, let's, um, you have a meeting with the corporation on August 22nd? Um,
What does it say the there? Officers, the officers of the congregation of the corporation consist of the officers of the church. Okay. Yeah, so we will now have a second meeting. We have, the church has a corporate status with the state of Oregon, and I now call that meeting to order. Uh, we have the trustees of that, the, the corporation are myself as president, uh, Wayne McManigal is the vice president, and Dave is the, is the secretary, is that right? Would anybody else like to be, would, are there any other nominations to replace any one of those men as trustees? And if you ask what a trustee does? It, <laughs> the state of Oregon requires us to have this, this meeting. So um, I don't know what a trustee does. They don't really do anything. If we had a building and there, there were like legal matters to, to oversee and insurance decisions to make, the trustees would be involved in that. Um, but there aren't any things. It, it never comes up throughout the year. This is the first time I've remembered all year that we actually, that I'm the president of the corporation. And because I, the president hasn't done anything. I would like to report to you and. Um, So moved. Yeah, second it. Second. second. Okay, all those in favor of ending the meeting of the corporation, say aye. <laughs> all those opposed, say no. <laughs> Motion carries. Okay, I think we can sing our song together. Um, on page 10, you'll see uh, how sweet and awesome is the place. Um, note on the third, the third stanza, last line. Rather starve than not come, come. I just saw that. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm not going to start it.